I came here when I was 25, uh, when the war just spilled over from Vietnam. And I'm from the foothills of Adelaide. I've had a very loving childhood. And when I came here and saw what misery it could be if you didn't have you know, a loving family and you didn't live in a safe country, it stayed with me forever. And then when I came back here in uh, 1993 to, to start the orphanage, it was brought home to me again what it can be like to be a child that's not belonging anywhere and not being loved. I love it when people tell me that I either shouldn't, couldn't or can't do something. That's like red rag to a bull. Uh, and that's where I get most of my success from. I love choosing projects and challenges that seem impossible and then uh, somehow being able to pull them off. Not everybody likes a determined person um, because you just don't let go, you're pretty relentless. I just don't take no for an answer most of the time. If a, a sponsor or a corporate says, no, we're not interested, I'll say, well, I'll try you next year. Maybe your um, d decision will change next year. And if you say no next year, I'll come back the third year until sometimes corporations just give me money to keep me from annoying them. I've achieved what um, has been achieved here mainly through um, creative visualisation, positive thinking, and just believing that it's going to happen. Um, not so much for myself, but for the children. I looked at them and I thought, they deserve this. They're going to get it. I drive through those gates and all the kids will run out to meet me. I've only been gone for about four hours, but it's like I've been gone for a week. And they all yell out, hello, mum, and I open the car door and one carries my keys, one carries my glasses and my bag, and they just welcome you. You know, it's that open-hearted love that you feel flowing to you at all hours of the day and night. And then all of a sudden, it's like somebody's plugged me into an electric force and the light comes on and I forget about the frustrating day I've had. The kids are what um, really solve all my, my, my problems, the, just the kids. They couldn't be more my family uh, than if they'd come from my body. The pride I get when I see them achieve at school or at sport or whatever, I get that same surge, um, that feeling of pride, your heart thumping and you wanting to go, yahoo, you know, when a kid does really well. Um, I know how real parents feel because I'm a real parent. I hate the word orphanage. I mean, we are basically an orphanage, but I see us as a home. And most NGOs here are providing shelter, food, medical care, education, the basic human rights that we all need. But at sunrise, I like to think we go um, a lot further than that. Um, we want to find the children's talents and nurture them. I want to be able to go through their school reports with them of a night. Uh, I want to find out who's good at maths and who's good at English. I want to give them that individual attention that you give your kids in your home. And if, you know, Tong Ian comes home and says, oh, Mum, I'd really like to learn the guitar, if he's serious about it, I'll get him guitar lessons. Now, this doesn't happen in, in other orphanages because they're orphanages. They're worried about food, medical care, education. But we want to nourish the soul as well. We want to be able to... Uh, make the children believe that if, if they really want to be something or do something or learn something or play a musical instrument, not to be afraid to ask. I used to think that we were products all of our families and of our uh, genes um, and that that was what judged what kind of adult we were going to be but I, that's been proved very wrong here with the children. Um, I've got many of my children that have come from illiterate families that have never, mum and dad have never learned to read and write. And if they hadn't come to Sunrise, they would have a, a life of, um, of illiteracy as well. And you just put a book in front of them, you put a computer in front of them, you put a teacher in front of them. These kids are capable of anything. Nothing is really impossible. That you can achieve what you want if you have enough passion for it. That you've got to engage other people in achieving that goal. That you can't do it on your own. You've got to find people and fire them up with the same passion that you've got to help you achieve what you want. And that's one of the things I'm most proud of. I've been able to attract around me from strangers, people who have come to Sunrise and have, have caught the, um, the flame that's here and gone away and wanted to raise money or wanted to organise something for us. There's different kinds of success and if your success can bring happiness to other people that's the best kind of success. Just personal success is a very empty thing. I know that when I um, had my career with the Department of Foreign Affairs and I travelled the world first class, 
I lived in accommodation with servants and I had my own driver and I went to cocktail parties and my work was stimulating and it was a world many people envied. I was successful in people's eyes but when I went to bed at night there was always something missing so personal success is not always the best kind. For me, my success has been bringing happiness to these children and I think if you can share your success so that other people benefit from what you're doing, that's the best kind of success.